My name is Frank Moore. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the pastor as resident theologian. I served in a local congregation as a pastor for several years. And then I sensed the Lord leading me to become a professional theologian in one of our university classrooms. I spent 30 years in that role. And I think what I did in the university classroom was important, but I think what you do as a pastor of a local congregation as it relates to theology is more important. Theology is important to us because it tells us what to believe and how to live. It talks to us about how we live life out on a daily basis. It tells us what to believe about God, what to believe about ourselves, and it answers the deepest and most important questions of life. So you, as a pastor in a local congregation, have the incredible privilege and responsibility of being theologian to your people. So what should you do? First of all, preach the word. You have the awesome responsibility of reading scripture on a regular basis, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then standing up and proclaiming that message to your people on a weekly basis. There's a really big difference between the way Wesleyans think and the way the broader evangelical Christian community thinks. Too many of our people are coming to our churches from Reformed backgrounds, Reformed traditions, and so they look at life very differently than we do. To put it quite simply, Calvinist theology focuses mainly on Genesis 3, the fall of humanity, and Romans 7. We can't live like we want to live, so we have to sin every day in word, thought, and deed. Wesleyans, on the other hand, primarily live in Genesis 2. God created all that he created and he made it good, and he's working to restore the world and humanity to the original plan that he had for us. We also live in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, our optimism of grace means that we teach and preach a message of full salvation. And by that, we mean not only does God forgive us of our sins, but he also transforms us by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit enters our life, he forgives our sins, and then he deals not only with sin as an act, but also the very thing down deep in our nature that causes us to want to prefer our way over God's way. So preaching the word is a great opportunity for you to be a resident theologian to your people. Secondly, lead communion. One of the most important things you will do in the ministry is as you present the gospel of Jesus Christ, serve communion on a regular basis to your people. I believe that it's a significant means of grace that should be practiced frequently by the body of Christ. We have a specific theology about communion, and this theology should be reflected in everything you say as a minister as you lead that service, because what you say matters. It really does matter. I'm convinced that many faithful folks who attend our church on a regular basis have very little understanding of what we mean by communion as a means of grace. So the Lord's Supper is a great opportunity for you to be a theologian to your people. Third, monitor the music. Contemporary Christian music is serving as a major pipeline of Reformed theology into the minds and hearts of our laity. The majority of the Christian music industry today is controlled by Reformed and Pentecostal songwriters who are being bankrolled by deep pockets. I know that you'll not be able to control the entire tsunami as it comes at your people, but you can control what's sung on your platform in worship service. Develop an ear for Wesleyan theology in your music. I'm horrified at the number of Reformed songs that our people are singing with gusto in local church settings, and I don't even think they know what they're saying. So it's important for you to monitor the music as you are resident theologian to your people. Fourth, mentor your lay leaders. I think you have a strong 
responsibility to identify the spiritually sensitive lay leaders in your congregation, get them together regularly, and talk to them about their leadership role in the church. Talk to them about the mission and vision that you have for that congregation. Talk to them about how God is leading in this place. Talk to them about the nuts and bolts of being an effective lay leader in your local church. That's a great opportunity to be a theologian to your people. And then finally, supervise the curriculum. You already know this, but I'm going to say it. It's ultimately your responsibility to see what small group Bible studies and Sunday school classes are using for curriculum. I could talk all day long about train wrecks I know of in local churches where pastors have not supervised the curriculum. I know one Wesleyan church where they use Jehovah's Witnesses material. Many pastors have told me we don't buy curriculum from our Wesleyan publishing houses. We just download it from the internet. I ask them why they do that. The obvious simple answer is, well, it's free. I can almost guarantee you that free material that they're downloading week after week after week and giving to their people is not Wesleyan. Supervising the curriculum is a great way for you to be a theologian to your people. So as a professional theologian, I want to challenge you to take seriously your role as the resident theologian to your congregation. What I say is important, but what you say is even more important. Our churches are facing theological illiteracy like never before. And God has placed you where you are today so you can faithfully help your people understand theology correctly. May the Lord help you as you remain faithful to the task to which he's called you. <laughs>